Chris from IELTS Daily. I thought I was going to start on time today and uh, I was a minute late. I apologize. Thank you very much for your patience. It's wonderful to have you all here. <clears throat> another day, another week of IELTS preparation. I hope everybody is working hard. Thank you for coming back to today's class. Um, you may be the first time, uh, it may be the first time that you've joined us. So if you are here for the first time, big hello to you. It is a live class. You may be watching this in the future. So if you are a future watcher, Hello to you. For all the people who are in, uh, involved in the live class, we love to read and have you comment. So make sure you put your ideas, um, all sorts of information on here. Thank you very much to Kawabunga. The app is awesome. I am so glad to hear that because I was just about to tell all of you wonderful people. Let me reach for my phone without knocking my water over. Um, the IELTS Daily app is available. There it is. Um, if you want to improve, if you want to watch amazing videos, if you want to get feedback on your speaking and writing, head over to the IELTS Daily website. You've just seen lots of information about it. Kawabunga, whoever that was in the chat, said that it's an awesome app. Thank you very much for you, Kawabunga. Um, Lorenzo says the app is amazing. Thank you very much, Lorenzo. You're very welcome. We've got so many people signing up and downloading the app. Um, it's it's so popular. Um, there's some free content on there. There's a free video course that you can come and watch. There's heaps of practice exercises, lots of um, sample speaking practices that you can do. It's wonderful. Um, let me see who else is in chat. Hello to Al, all from one, all in one from Bangladesh. Nice to have you. And who else is here? And green member Atit Patel. Hello to a green member. You are a member of the channel. It's nice to have you. We have a very exciting class today because we have a surprise expert. That person is going to be joining us in the box on my, on your right, on my left, over here. But who is it? I'm very excited. I'm, I'm desperate to know who this person is. Well, you may be doing preparation and there's lots of websites that I recommend. There's also lots of rec websites that I don't recommend. This is one rec website that I do recommend very highly. If you want some free material, you can come on over to this website and the person who is going to, who runs the website is here. So without further ado, and I need to do a bit of technical checking so that they can hear me and that I can hear them. So if we do need to do a little bit of testing, let me know. This person is ready and waiting and it is Simone from IELTS blog. There she is. Hello, Simone. Hello, Wait. everyone. Let me see if I can hear you and the students can hear you. I often do this, Simone, and there's usually a technical problem. And these wonderful students sit there very patiently, making sure that everything works out. So thank you very much for all their patience. Give me a second, Simone. Let's do a bit of talking and let's get some students to do thumbs up if they can hear you. Okay, yeah, so I'm very excited to be here today. When Chris asked me to come on the show, I was just thrilled because I wanted for a long time to do a collaboration with Isles Daily because I think very highly of what Chris does. He's, he's doing some wonderful work. He's giving a lot of his time free to everyone. And he helps people pass IELTS the first time. And that's really important. That sets him apart from many, many other people in the IELTS industry. Thank so, you, yeah, I'm really, I'm really, really happy to be here <laughs> with you, Chris. It's, a, it's great to have you. And so I think you can hear me. I think I can hear you. The students can hear you. The students can hear me. Everybody's giving thumbs up. So I think we can continue. What a great start to the class today. That doesn't normally happen. So I think you've brought good luck to us today. That's really good to hear. <laughs> um, so Simone, um, first of all, we l would love to hear about you. And what I've done is... I've created, um, I've come over here. Hopefully we can still see you. And let me just hide the IELTS Daily website. And no, that's not what I want to see. I want to go here. And fingers crossed this will work. There we are. There's your website. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. 
There it is. Oh, no, I've lost you. Wait there. So that's one. So we've encountered our first problem. Ooh. We can hear, uh, I cannot hear you when we're on that other page. So let's start with your website. Tell us about your website and I'll try and fix what I've just been doing there. So keep going. All right. So um, it's a kind of long story because it started way, way, way back in the past. But um, when I had to take the IELTS test, I realized that I have a problem. And my problem was unlike um, any of the problems of today, because today if you ask anyone, well, what's your biggest problem in IELTS preparation or one of your biggest ones? People will say, well, Chris, I'm overwhelmed with information. I have all of these sources. I have too much information to process. And back in my day, I had the opposite. I didn't have enough information. So uh, I had a real trouble finding books, finding resources, finding uh, uh, study aids to help me prepare for this test. And this is why Ireland's Law was created. It was out of necessity. Because I, I figured if I stumble upon this, these problems, other, people's, other people must have uh, done the same thing. And then I decided to put all the resources, all the techniques, all the methods in one place, under one roof, for everyone to be able to come enjoy, easily find, easily use, and prepare for the test without too, wasting too much time on hunting for materials. That's amazing. And it's so such a useful website. So um, I'm going to go back and forward between your website and you can tell us a little bit and you can guide me through. Um, the students can head over there too after the class today. But give us a little bit of a rundown. What can students do and see on your website? So give me, tell me where to go and I'll, I'll, you can talk us through. Oh, well, uh, you have all the uh, resources that are to guide you through your IELTS preparation. Well, on the extreme left, uh, right next to the logo, there you'll find um, books and you'll find courses and you'll, you'll find uh, um, helpful strategies to help you uh, um, understand how you need to solve IELTS questions so that you do them quickly and you do them accurately. Good. So the, there's those materials. That's amazing. Uh, in, one, of, one of my favorite parts of your website is this section here, which is the recent question section. Can you oh, tell us a little yeah. bit about this? Sure. Yeah, so the recent questions, uh, it's a very, very successful project that developed because uh, people come to the website where we put all the latest IELTS questions that uh, test takers share with us from memory. So whatever they can remember after taking the test, they tell us, oh, well, I had this and that question. And then we upload it on the website for everyone to enjoy and prepare for their exams because the best method of preparation is using the real questions from real exams. And it's so really true. And a lot of students don't realize that IELTS actually recycles a lot of their content. So it doesn't mean that if somebody in Vietnam gets a question one week, it doesn't mean they're never going to see that question again because they have a bank of materials that they just recycle. Isn't that right? Yeah, that's completely true. And uh, for example, now in, we're in February now and we've just seen questions from uh, Ma May last year. Uh, and we, we've seen actually a couple of tests in a row repeating from May in February. So they definitely get recycled. And it's a really good idea for you to go over the past questions and prepare, for, prepare to answer them. And it will really help you in your exam. And my students told me time and again that when a question you prepared for comes up and in, in your exam, it feels like winning the lottery. You, you say, oh, wow, how good am I? You know. It's so true. I have a question that I'm just going to bring up on the screen. Um, there's a word that I see all the time, and you can probably see that there. It's called prediction files. What is your thought on any website that tells people about this so-called prediction file? Do you think there is such a thing as a prediction file? Um, do you think that any website really knows when the test or... Um, the type of questions that are definitely going to come up. Do you think that's true? Uh, well, uh, I'm afraid uh, if you were hoping for a positive 
And so I might disappoint you because I'm very, very negative about predictions of any kind because nobody except for IELTS know, knows um, what question will be in which exam. They just pull it out of the vault and they use it and nobody knows when and how. And if they did, it wouldn't be a test, would it? Correct. And for anybody that's out there who may be studying online, and if you hear or see people saying, I have the prediction file or the prediction file for April to September 2020-24, they are basically trying to con you, aren't they, Simone? Uh, well, that's what I think, yeah. It's, it's a bit of a strong word, but yeah, I think so. Yeah, because nobody knows really apart from IELTS. So unless they have a insider knowledge, <laughs> which is very unlikely, I just think practice the most common topics practice some of the recent topics practice some of the old topics it doesn't matter what you're practicing any type of practice is going to be helpful right yeah what i tell my students is they should prepare for topic areas so the question themselves they will change so one time they will ask you uh well do you like uh, baking cakes and another time they will uh, ask you do you like eating cakes but the topic will be cakes and sweets. And if you are prepared for that topic, you will answer any question. It's not, not a problem for you. Exactly. Now, for any students that are there wanting to know um, or ask Simone any questions, the chat section is completely open. Pop your ideas in the chat. I'll be looking through while Simone's talking to you all. Um, we have a, a bit of a special section today, don't we, Simone, where you are going to put me in the hot seat a little bit later. You um, have prepared a lot of speaking questions that you're going to pose to me, and I'm going to try and answer them as honestly as possible, as though I was in the test. And I haven't seen the questions. Questions. I have no idea the topics that you have um, posed to me, so I'm a little bit nervous because all these people are watching me and judging me. Um, so that that's coming up very soon. So please stick around if you uh, want to see me in the hot seat. Um, Simone, what do you find is the hardest part of IELTS for most students? Um, I think it's the active skills, namely writing and speaking. And uh, they are so for the reason that uh, there's a lot of people out there who learn English uh, through listening and through reading, mainly reading, because reading is so much easier and listening. Uh, well, there's a lot of listening material available now, so people listen to podcasts, people watch movies, and uh, it's easy to come across and it's natural. People also like songs in English, so they listen to that, and it like seeps through. But Writing is an active skill and it has to come from you. Listening and reading is consuming. Writing and speaking is producing material, either spoken language or written language. And this is why, this is why uh, they are considered harder. And this is why people have trouble scoring well on writing and on speaking, at least in my understanding. Thank you. I'm just writing down something. You uh, came up with a, a, term, a term there called it seeps through. A uh, really, really high level piece of language there. Are you able to explain to anybody that may not know what seeps through means? Uh, well, it means, uh, imagine water going through, stop, uh, through a bunch of sand, getting filtered. It means that the ideas get into your head little by little. And, oh, almost like uh, absorbed, a, right? Yeah, but it's, it's a slow process and then the information gets there slowly, but once it's there, it stays there. Perfect, perfect. Um, what are the most, for you, most common questions that people ask you when, you when they write to you and they say, and they pose a question to you? Not necessarily IELTS questions, but general IELTS questions. What do they ask you? Oh, well, there's so many different questions, really. I, I can remember a few that came up recently. So uh, the main uh, struggle of some of the students was that they couldn't find time to prepare for IELTS. They took the test without being um, well prepared and they said, well, I didn't have time to prepare. What do I do to find the time? And, and then uh, what I tell them is, uh, well, look at your entire day and mm -hmm. see what you're doing, just map it out, Talk see what you, what, where your time goes, because anybody has half an hour in their day to do their IELTS study, 
And you just need to find that half an hour, uh, that little block, block it in your calendar, block it in your diary, do whatever you have to do so that that half an hour is reserved for IELTS. Yeah. And they, that way you prepare much better and you feel in, a, in a, a lot more control over your preparation and you'll be uh, in a good shape when you take the test. Totally. We've just had a question come through. Excellent question from uh, Sinduja. Sinduja says, Hi, Simone and Chris and Simone. What are your thoughts on the speaking module for students with regards to AI feedback? Is AI feedback reliable? And I think Sinduja asked the same question about for writing too. So what do you have any thoughts on AI feedback for speaking and writing? Uh, well, what I know is I, there's a reason why IELTS, don't, they don't use um, AI assessors or AI modules that assess people's speaking. I know in other tests it's acceptable and they do it, but in IELTS they don't because they don't believe that uh, a, at this point AI is capable enough to assess and give you a fair score of your speaking ability and of your writing ability. If they thought that, they would have long uh, impl uh, implemented that because it could be a real um, cost-saving measure for them. It makes all the sense in the world for them to do that. And if they don't do that, it's, it's because they genuinely don't believe that it's capable of giving a fair assessment of a person, mm. uh, a person's writing or speaking ability. Yeah. Um, AI is really, really a useful tool for students who prepare for the test. Now, I use it myself. I know students use it. So um, it could be they are doing a, a piece of writing and you can ask any AI piece of software something like, how many grammar area, how many grammar errors are there in this? Can you show me the grammar errors in this piece of writing? Can you fix the grammar errors? And it's such a useful piece of tool. I would never say go straight to the fixing the errors. I would ask the AI software, first of all, to count the number of errors and you maybe have to find them yourself. And then you can say, um, show me the grammar errors and then it will pick it out and then you can ask it to fix it. So I think doing it step by step is a really useful piece of um, kind of oh, yeah. uh, advice. Mm -hmm. In preparation, I think it's it's really invaluable because you can really get an understanding. It can uh, assess your grammatical errors. It can uh, maybe even comment on, on your coherence and cohesion, uh, on or the way you organize your thoughts, the way you convey your ideas and explain them, how you develop them. It can uh, comment on that. I wouldn't rely on it for the actual assessment of your score because uh, yeah, the the number of times I played with it and I tried to get it to give me an accurate evaluation of someone's writing, it just couldn't. It would give one score and then I would start asking questions. Well, why did you give it uh, such and such score? And then it would change the score and say, oh, so apologies for this oversight. And uh, it would just not be reliable and mm. I just don't have the confidence to trust it on that. Yeah, I tend, I'm definitely in agreement with you on that. Um, Shall we do a few speaking questions to see if we can uh, put me on the spot and see if the, the if I can give some answers? Now, when you ask me these questions, um, try if you I don't know if you've got a pen and paper there with you. Do you? Um, yeah, I do. Yep. Maybe write down some of the pieces of vocabulary that I use, and then we can have a discussion around those because. When I'm speaking fast, I sometimes forget what I say. So if you, if anything comes to mind or if anything, you know, jumps out as, as being useful for students, feel free to write it down and then we can have a discussion. Okay, yeah, sure. Good. Are we, what, which section of the test are you going to put me under first? Um, well, let's start with part one. Great. What do you think? Perfect. <gasps> I'm nervous, Simone, I'm nervous. All right. But so I, in, sorry, sorry to interrupt yeah. you. Um, for anybody that's watching this in the future, please feel free to put comments in the section below and any words or phrases that you enjoy that Simone doesn't pick out, put them below and then other people can comment on them. So, right, oh, I'm yeah, ready. Please do, do help me because I'm oh. also a little bit nervous. I'm, um, I'm feeling... Uh, and um, if I miss something and you pick up on it, please do let us know. Let's go. All right, so Chris, do you have many friends? 
I do have lots of friends, actually. I'm a very uh, social person. I spend a lot of time meeting people as I am a teacher. I love to meet new people and I spend a lot of time developing relationships because I feel that relationships are going to lead somewhere in the future. I have some very close friends, but I do have quite a wide network of other acquaintances too. Okay, that's an excellent answer. I didn't have time to write all of it, all the useful vocabulary that you use. I find use. that the wow. word acquaintances is a really difficult word yeah. for people to pronounce. Let me just write it, I'll, I'll pop it on the screen, give me a second. Here we, uh, no, not that one, where are we? There we should see, so, um, acquaintance, oops, acquaintances. So acquaintances is a really difficult word, what does it mean, Simone? Uh, well, it means somebody that you know, but you don't know them, know them really well. I think I just spelled it wrong. There we go. Um, good. Yeah, somebody that you don't really know that well. Excellent. Anything that you want to pick up that you remembered? Oh, well, uh, quite a few things, actually. Uh, a very social person. That's an excellent way to describe uh, Chris in particular and anybody who's really friendly and outgoing. What's the opposite of a social person? Could we say that somebody is introverted? Or shy? Um, yeah, well, shy would be that, yeah. yeah. Um, we, we could call them a sociopath, but that would be... <laughs> <laughs> uh, people who don't like spending time with other people, they tend to be quite shy or... So, oh, maybe he's a reserved person. That's a good one, isn't it? I'm, yeah, I'm quite a yeah. reserved person. I'm definitely not a reserved person. No, Anything else that you want to... No, outgoing. Ah, there's a good um, word. Yeah, I didn't say that. Outgoing, that's a great word that we uh, didn't cover. What else? Um, so you also said developing relationship and, mm. and relationships. Yeah, uh, so. And that, that was great. That was a great expression to use. You That's something called a collocation, isn't it? So if we, um, we can develop relationships and we can build relationships. So both of those are um, ways that you could describe it. Can we also foster relationships? Uh, I think we definitely can. Yeah. yeah, let me just give you, I'll put, show those on the screen. So we can develop relationships, we can build relationships, we can foster relationships. All those words are collocations, words which fit together quite naturally. So if you're talking about building uh, a network of people, those are three verbs that you could possibly use. Yeah, that's an excellent way to describe that. Mm. Uh, you also said a wide network of mm. uh, acquaintances wide network of which is um uh what would be the opposite of a wide network of something um i think it would be um a close would, close, close, close knit network. circle of friends ah oh, that's a great phrase a close knit circle of friends so if you were describing um <clears throat> somebody who doesn't really have many friends but has a really close network of friends you can say i have a close knit circle of friends fantastic language there simone oh thank you mm -hmm. <laughs> that's actually your language <laughs> <laughs> what um what else all right so second question um also on the topic of friendship uh, do you prefer talking to your friends face-to-face -face or on the phone? I absolutely detest talking on the phone. <laughs> um, I much <laughs> prefer talking face-to-face. -face. I, When people ring me on the phone, I'm like, oh, can we make this as short as possible? So if I see people face-to-face -face, or even on Zoom like this, I much, much, much prefer uh, getting people's you know, facial signals and look, looking people in the eye rather than talking on the phone. So phone talking makes me really awkward for some reason, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's because you don't see those, um, the body language. Exactly, yeah. So um, detest, what, what does detest mean? It was detest, so detest is uh, despise, uh, dislike. Despise, good word, despise and also dislike yeah are you a um, are you a, are you a fan of talking on the phone um actually no i prefer <laughs> face to face but i'm old school so <laughs> <laughs> that's a good word so you can say i'm old school what does that mean oh that means, means old-fashioned that means the generation before all the tech and devices uh, came along exactly you know i watched a video um recently and this you People who are watching this may have already seen this on um, 
like social media, it came up on my Instagram feed and it was a video of a mum and a daughter trying to gesticulate, trying to gesture things that people do. So if I said to you, Simone, show me how people answer, like if you were to gesture, show me how people answer the phone. Like this, right? Yeah. Nowadays, young people do this. Yeah. <laughs> and if I said, um, hang up the phone, correct, like this, what do yeah. young people do nowadays? What do they do? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, but, we don't do that anymore. So all the young people yeah. who are watching this channel today, you're like, who are these two old people who do this? Um, I'm <laughs> oh, afraid... no, no, you do not get to join me, Chris. You're far too young to be talking like that. <laughs> I have a question for you. How do people use uh, to dial the phone number in the olden days? Oh, like like this. Yeah, I, I used to have a phone like this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> waiting for the thing to come and people are like I'm sure people watching this are like what on earth are they talking about um, yeah anyway sorry sorry to digress what does digress mean <laughs> uh, it means to go off topic and that's something you should not do in IELTS so you should not do that too much off uh, going off topic so sorry to digress means sorry to go off topic anyway let's um, get back on track all right, so I have a different topic for you now. I hinted at it at the beginning. Uh, so, do you like sweets and cakes? I have a very sweet tooth, and yes, I am very guilty of having dessert more than I should, really. Um, I, If I was to go and uh, go to a restaurant, I would usually be a little bit naughty and have a dessert. I also really like <laughs> cooking, cooking, cooking and baking. Um, I like cooking cakes, so I do. I I have a guilty pleasure that that sweet things and that sweet things are them. Oh, that's awesome! So you said sweet tooth. I have a sweet tooth for. Yes, I have a sweet tooth. Uh, I have a. Now, a lot of my experience with um, language learners is most people know the word sweet. It's really common to know the word sweet. They go, oh, I love sweet food. And then you ask, um, what's the opposite of sweet? And they go, uh, salty. And it's like, no, it's not salty. <laughs> what's the opposite of sweet? Uh, can people in the chat answer that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's ask them. Um, let's come over to the chat and see. If, does anybody know what the opposite of sweet is? Uh, let's come over here. Um, well, it's, there's actually a little bit of a delay, so we'll come back to that question and um, then we'll we'll carry on. What else? Okay. What other things did I say? Well, so you, you said dessert, which is yep. a, a very very good way to describe anything sweet and nice, and uh, cakes and sweets in particular. Yep, and lots of people mispronounce these two, don't they? What's the difference between those yeah. two? Well, there's desert and there's dessert. And yep. desert is a place without water, Correct. which is all sand. And dessert is that that cake or the chocolate or that uh, little piece of pleasure that you allow yourself to have. Yeah, and sometimes people say sweet treats, don't they? Like if you want yes. something sweet, like a sweet treat, it means that you can um, reward yourself or maybe if you've been to the gym or if you've done something active, then you can have a sweet treat. But yeah. I really um, try... Go on. And I undo your hard work. Undo your hard work, exactly. Let's see if people have got the opposite of... Um, no, so we've got we've got bitter, we've got bitter, we've got pain, we've got spicy and hot. Um, pain. Bitter, bitter, bitter. Only one person has got the correct answer that I can see. Well done to Sinduja. And the answer is... Simone? Bitter. Oh, I was going to say savoury. <laughs> <laughs> The opposite of sweet. Uh, well, like, it depends it could on be, how you think about it. It could be, yes. So for me, for me, if I was going to go out and say, do you like sweet food? I would normally say, do you like savory food? Things that which oh, are... Oh, yeah. The, sorry, I thought you meant the taste, the actual taste of uh, the food. Forgive me, yes. So the opposite of sweet in terms of... Uh, if you were having this topic and you don't like sweet food, you could actually say, well, I'm not a huge fan of, of sweet food. I tend to prefer savory food. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Good. Um, let's continue. All right. Uh, so, uh, 
The next question is, I think you half answered that. Have you ever prepared a cake by yourself? I love baking. It's surprising. A lot of people say, really? Um, it's something quite therapeutic for me, having to measure all the ingredients. When was the last time that I baked? Probably a couple of months ago, I made some scones. I don't know if you um, li like scones and if people know what scones are. They're quite a traditional um, dessert from from the UK, I think. They are mm -hmm. a little bit sweet, a little bit savoury. Um, and they taste really good, especially warm out of the oven. Yeah, do, do you have them with jam or just... I, I have them with anything? clotted cream and jam. Mm, that, that's mm -hmm. nice. Are, are you a fan of scones? Uh, well, I'm not in particular, but <laughs> I, I like jam. Good. Are you, do you have a sweet tooth? I have a sweet tooth for chocolate and anything to do with chocolate, especially oh. lava cake. Okay. Do you prefer bitter chocolate or like milky chocolate? No, it's for me, it's the bitter chocolate that I want. Great. All right. Anything else that I said that you want to expand on? Oh, yes, yes. You said that baking was therapeutic and it was really deep and it was a good, uh, like, it was a good vocabulary option mm. because it, it is indeed uh, therapeutic and people have the Zen moment when they're baking or cooking. So that's a good way to describe how you would bake and why you bake. So therapeutic, yeah, it's a good word which if people are maybe stressed and they want to do something methodical and take and forget about other things, you do things which are therapeutic. Things like yoga, um, Pilates can be therapeutic, reading a book can be therapeutic, listening yeah. to um, calm music is usually quite therapeutic. People get their stress relief from different things. I'm not the type of person, personally, I don't like to sit around, so I find yoga, um, meditation, I find that quite difficult. Whereas baking, because you have to do things, it's still quite therapeutic for me. How about you? Um, well, I can't bake many things, but I have a couple of cakes that I told myself how to bake. And now I'm really proud of my skill because uh, it's it's very unusual for me to be uh, good at anything kitchen related. Okay, interesting. Um, somebody yes. just put something in the chat. They've said, um, let me see that. Rasu says, yes, I did bake a cake while we were at home during coronavirus. I had tried a lot of recipes, including cakes, and it tastes really good. Now, Rasu, because it happened in the past, you should have said it tasted really good. But thank you very much for contributing. It's great to hear your feedback and input. Do you have another question for me? Oh, yeah, I do. So if we're talking about culture, on what occasions do people in your culture usually prepare sweets and cakes? The first thing that comes to mind is obviously birthdays. So birthday cakes are pretty common where, where I, I live and where I'm from. So if somebody were to have a birthday, it would be pretty typical that we would go and take or, or have birthday cake when we were celebrating. And there's, there's a bit of a tradition where you blow out the candles and you cut the cake. I suppose a, a second thing that we could talk about would be weddings. So there will always be a wedding cake. And if two people were getting married, then often they would cut the cake and give the cake um, at the end of the wedding as a kind of souvenir of the wedding. And I don't know if you know about this one, Simone, but in my country, often the wedding cake is made of fruit and they take and give the wedding cake and people keep it for years. They keep the wedding cake. Like I know there are people that keep it for kind of 10 years and they want, they want to have their wedding cake 10 years after they got married. And the cake doesn't go bad? No, it doesn't go bad because it's... I, don't, I have no idea what's in it, but um, it's bizarre, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, well, it must be some special cake that they make for mm -hmm. weddings. Who knows? Yeah, so, yeah, so uh, you had some beautiful vocabulary for uh, when you describe birthday cakes and blow out candles mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, wedding cake being a souvenir from the, ve from the wedding. Mm -hmm. um, a souvenir? Um, Maybe students can um, contribute to this and, and we can ask them, what type of events do you have in your country that involve cakes or sweets? Maybe um, 
New Year. I don't know. At Christmas time, we have a lot of cakes in my country,、uh, sweets that you that I try oh, yeah, to the, avoid. The famous, the famous Christmas cake. I love it. Do you like it? That's、I、very similar、it. to the、um, keeping the wedding cake. It's made from the same type of,、uh, you know, the fruit that's inside. Yeah. So people、mm-hmm. keep the Christmas cake too for for many years. Bizarre. All right. Okay. Now I understand how it doesn't go bad because it's dried fruit. That's how. Hey, there you go. But it still has flour in there, I'm sure, and sugar. Oh yeah. And, I mean, yeah, a lot of it. It's dusted with sugar, isn't it? Yeah.、Um, I hate Christmas cake, to be honest, but. That's pers- personal <laughs> preference. Personal <laughs> preference.、Um, There we go. You you've had too much of it. Ah、uh, yes. <laughs> okay. So,、um, do you want to wait for people in the chat、let's、to see, throw yeah, some if, options? Yeah. Let's see if anybody's coming up with anything. Sorry, that's your website.、Um, who else? Um, Sinduja says, "Oh, it's definitely during festivals and special occasions like birthdays or weddings. Cake always cake." Always is. It's better to say cake is always a symbol of love and warmth, a special reason to rejoice in delightful memories at、uh, moments. Thank you very much for that.、Um, Atit says in India at the birth of a child and at marriage, I think people eat cakes or eat sweets. That's great.、Um, Sasha says a special cake and eggs are a must for Russian Easter. Ah yes, obviously I've forgotten. Many people have、uh, celebrate Easter, and they have these chocolate eggs, don't they? Oh no! Actually, they use real eggs. They color them. That's uh, true. And, uh, yeah, and they really make that special cake, and it has this very、um, special form. It's a bit of a cylind- cylindrical shape. Great. Anybody else want to put so? Viet says there are a few occasions where Vietnamese people eat sweet treats. The first one is Tet, the most significant festival in Vietnam. Families prepare prepare and indulge in a variety of sweet things like jam. That's great complex language, isn't it? So we've got、um, yeah. the most significant festival.、Uh, families prepare and indulge in vari- a variety of sweet things and ja- like jam. Great.、Um, Grammatical complexity. There are a few occasions where Vietnamese people. So we have a where sentence there, which is wonderful. Remember, in the speaking test, twenty-five percent of your mark comes from grammatical range and accuracy. And in order to re-、uh, achieve seven or higher, you have to show grammatical range. That involves using different complex sentences. Most native speakers don't even realize what complex sentences are. We just use them naturally. When you're preparing for the test, it's worth spending a little bit of time understanding what complex sentences are, trying to use them if you can. However, my advice is only use them if you are very confident using them, or else you're going to be putting your、uh, grammar mark at risk if you make mistakes. Very, very true.、Mm. So, are you? Yeah, are you ready for part two? <gasps> I am ready for part two. If you want to,、um, do you have do you have it on on paper or do you have it、um, digitally? Because you're welcome to send、um, it to me. I have it on paper. On paper. Paper. That's fine. No, no, good. I'll write it down so that I can make some notes. I don't normally need、uh, preparation time, but、um, well, you can give me a little bit anyway. So read your question to me. Sure. So th- this one is a short one, so you won't have trouble.、Um, talk about the time you used a map. Okay. And you should say when it was, where where it was, what kind of map you used, and explain how helpful the map was and why. Gosh, that's a difficult question.、Um, Okay, let me just make the window a bit bigger so that students can see. And tick 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 tick.、Um, let's see if this works. There we go. Talk about map time when you used a map. Great. Okay. Now, for many people who do the test, this would be a very difficult question because maps are not that common anymore, unless we're talking about digital maps. So,、um, Simone, do you have a timer on you? Um, I 
Actually, I do on my watch. Yeah. So get your watch or your phone and you can act as the examiner. And All right. Let me shall know. I, I, I don't think I need... Shall I leave a minute? No, I should, I should be okay. And if I don't go for two minutes, please keep, keep me going, okay? Keep right. gesticulating. Yep, yep, then just a moment, I'll bring up my timer. There we go. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, I hate part two, it's so nerve-wracking. It is, it is, because you anyway. have to talk for such a long time. I know. Tell, <laughs> me, right. when I, tell me when. So, uh, if you're ready, you can start now. Thanks. So, when I was growing up, I was in the Scouts. Um, I don't know if you know what the Scouts are, but it's a young organization for, for, for young people. And one of the things we had to do was go camping and we would have to go on hikes. Now, I remember most of my childhood, we would spend once a month, I would say, we would go away on hikes and we would have to use maps. I had to learn how to read maps I had to learn how to use compasses and I would have to learn how to interpret all the contours of maps. And that's not something that people have to do nowadays. And I remember we would do long hikes, maybe over two or three days. We would be dropped off in one place and then we would have to find our way to another place. And all of this time we would have no access to digital devices. This was kind of a long time ago and I just remember it was such a freeing experience because we literally didn't have anything other than one piece of paper and we all had to work together by using this map to get from another from one place to another place and I know that nowadays lots of people really struggle when it comes to being um, to be aware of space and to have directions and to understand how to get from one place to another place because everybody seems to rely on maps on their phone now, whether it's Google Maps or Apple Maps. I'm really guilty of it myself. I use maps for, I use Google Maps to get from place to place, but I do try to make a concerted effort to make sure that my map reading skills don't disappear because there's something really invaluable about being able to navigate in the event that your phone doesn't work or remember a particular street or how to get from, from one place to another. And thank you very much, Chris. That's two minutes. I'm pretty good at calculating time, aren't I? You are so clever. I've, I've, done, I've done this too many times that I know how, many, how long two minutes is. No, that, that's amazing. Have you timed it perfectly to the second? <laughs> and I promise I did not have my phone working at the time. Um, and and so, you didn't know what I was going to ask you. No, I didn't. No, genuinely, a lot of people would be a lot of people would be skeptical, and they'd be like, "Yeah, Chris knew what 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 he was going to ask." I well, actually. I promise you, everyone, he said he had no idea. <laughs> And, and Simone actually wrote to me by email and she said, let me send you the questions in advance. And I said, what did I say? You said, surprise me. <laughs> because I think it's like, genuinely, I think it's really important that students get to see how other people do the test. Now, I've been doing this for many, many, many years. So I know what strategies to use during the test. So you will notice that I actually didn't start even talking about maps. I actually gave a little bit of background to the topic and it buys me a little bit more time. It buys me a few more words. So I talked about being in the scouts, whereas a lot of people will go straight into the topic. And I find that if you're able to extend your answers before you talk about the actual topic, it can actually be really useful, uh, a strategy that people may want to use. Um, there are other things that I did during my test that I know lots of people may benefit from. So I started talking about maps. I told the story and then I realized in my head, I, I knew that I wasn't at two minutes yet. So I started talking about other types of maps that I use. And that's a strategy that anybody can use. You don't have to stick on the topic, nor do you have to actually answer all the questions that are on here. So you don't have to say when it was or where it was. I didn't pay attention to those questions or those prompts when I was speaking. I just try to speak 
from my heart. That's as the best advice that I can give. It's it's not supposed to be scripted, is it, Simone? Yeah, I completely support that. When you are genuine, it comes across and the examiner sees that. And even though it's not a requirement of the test to tell a real story, when the story is real, it just makes it better. It does. And all of that, all that I told you, it was true. So it helped me. But I do find that um, think about the questions like, what's the main topic and what are the other topics that you could that you could talk about? So I went from paper maps to digital maps. Um, it could be maybe talk about a cake and then talk about baking or even cake TV, like shows that you, or programs that you've seen about baking and cakes. As long yeah, as you can, idea. yeah, and as even long cake as you, recipes. exactly, as long as you push yourself to speak for two minutes, because um, one of the biggest things that put people off, people get nervous when the examiner tells them to continue. If you're in control and you know that you've spoken for two minutes and the examiner interrupts you, you're probably going to feel better about it. Because I know that for many students, when I do practice tests with students and I do this, they start to panic. Mm -hmm. They start to go, oh my God, I haven't said enough. And then they, all of their thoughts, you know, their brains turn to mush and they just, they, 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 they lose it. So my advice would be, you've got two minutes to talk. You're allowed up to two minutes and the examiner wants to hear as much as possible so they can grade your language. So you don't really have anything to lose by, by talking up to the two minutes and waiting for the examiner to interrupt you. Yeah, I agree. I it's easy, totally it's agree. easier said than done though, isn't it? Because under pressure and not having any sense of time, it's bloody hard. It is. And this is why I suggest that people practice at home with a clock. Set a timer. If you have trouble talking for, for two minutes, which feels like a very long time, start from one minute. Just fill, fill out that one minute with your talking and then see if you can do a bit more the next session that you do. And then yeah. incre increase it gradually and then you'll get a feel for what two minute, two minute space feels like, just like Chris does. Exactly. Um, what I was going to, I was going to segue into another point. You have built an app from IELTS blog. Yes, Can students have. do some practice on part two on your app? Yeah, they definitely can. We have this uh, whole section dedicated to the speaking test and people can go and practice. Well, they, they can't choose the past. If they are doing a test, they're doing the entire test. Uh, if they want to submit it and get feedback on it, they have to do it all. But if they just want to practice, they can easily record themselves talking about part two topic. They have uh, some selection to choose from. And then I suggest that they listen to it, play it again and again, and try and spot all the various mistakes, like uh, pronunciation mistakes, vocabulary mistakes, like wrong, wrong words that you've used out of context. Um, out of place, I want to say. Um, so things like um, better expressions that you can think of later that you couldn't think of at, at the moment of recording. Uh, this, is, this makes a very good practice. Yep, great advice. So the homework for all of these wonderful people in the chat, they're all um, commenting and, and being wonderful members. Homework for today is to go and download the IELTS um, blog app it's available on the app store and on ios play store is that right on the, yes on, yeah, it, on, is. On the, it is it is android and iphone and and <coughs> android and iphone and come and download if you haven't already the ielts daily app because you can do speaking practice in both of them very respectable respected and high quality speaking uh, practice opportunities for you what did you think about my speaking part two well, I, I thought that it was excellent. It was an interesting story uh, and it had lots of uh, great vocabulary in it. And I wrote down a few options and uh, uh, we can go over them now if you would like. Yep. So you first you mentioned scouts and you explained what, explained what scouts were. Uh, and you said that it was a, uh, an organization uh, for young people. 
um, and he said that one of the main activities that they do is go on go away on hikes. Yeah. Which yeah. is also a great thing to use, uh, and it's related to maps because well, well, when would you use a map if you go on a hike? Exactly. And I just wanted um, to say, to interrupt you there. Sorry, Simone. When students, m- maybe the examiner doesn't know about a particular topic. So um, I can't guarantee that the examiner would know about scouts. So it's always a great idea to boost your like to boost your language to just give a very short explanation. And it's particularly pertinent. It's particularly important if you're talking about food or places or cultural locations that may not the examiner may not be familiar with. Yeah, I think it's great advice and it's, it's a very good idea to get and give a little bit of an overview. Great. What else would you like to talk about? Uh, also, it, it, um, this is an excellent way to, uh, to explain what you actually do with the map. You read a map. Yeah, so, read, read a map. Yeah. So read a map and uh, you mentioned compass points. Yeah, so, com- so I talked about compass which is the the device that you use to look at north south east west right yep that's it uh and uh, you mentioned being dropped off in a certain place or location dropped and off somewhere yeah which means to be put somewhere without any um it, it could be with knowledge so i can drop somebody off somewhere but it can also be um without any knowledge so i can drop you off home or I can drop somebody off without them knowing where we go. Yeah, uh, and you also said um, find our way somewhere. Yep. Which is uh, also very, very much on the topic of uh, orienteering. Yeah, that's. A, I should have used the word orienteering, which uh, we had to do in Scouts. It was a very common game that we had to to do. I think I said something that like we had to interpret contour lines. Uh, yeah, and that's that's a really high level language and not many people are ever going to need that so we don't have to spend too much time on it but if you were ever to read a map there are some lines which which um show how high a place is and they're called contour lines yeah the, the topography of it the topography yeah people now talk about contouring with uh, makeup i hear like what does that mean I have no idea, honestly. <laughs> so I've I've heard that it's used to like if a, if a person's using makeup, they create kind of shades within their cheek, and that's contouring to to create a different um, I don't know three um, D type image. Oh my! I feel so ignorant. <laughs> I, I have no idea how I knew that. <laughs> All right. So uh, and another wonderful thing that you said was. Aware of space. Aware of space. Now, I I probably should have said, I mean, aware of space is fine, but I was think I was actually wanting to say spatial awareness, um, and it's <laughs> it's actually really funny that you that you raise this because I made a spelling mistake in one of the IELTS Daily posts that I put out last week, and I spelt it as spatial awareness like this, oh, not special. It. And um, somebody pointed it out and they were very right to point it out. But spatial awareness is your ability to understand the things that are around you and to be aware of them. So um, do you have do you have good spatial awareness? Um, Not at all. No. If you're parking Uh, a car, are you any good at parking cars? uh, Yeah, but that's just because I have lots of experience. Yeah. But otherwise, my spatial awareness is um, close to none. Okay. Um, Anything else? Um, and there was uh, ask for directions, which is ask, what you do when you get lost. Exactly. Ask for directions. That's another collocation. Let's see if any students have got anything they wish to share with us. Let's, we've got um, XIX experience. Hello. Welcome back. We've got. Can we go off topic, Lorenzo? Can we go off topic in the test? The answer is, speaking to examiners, the answer is yes, if necessary, and you can't think of anything else to say. So there's no specific item in the band descriptor that says you must stay on topic. It does say, though, that you have to have a fully developed response. So if you are really struggling to continue, maybe talk about things that are the opposite or think about a second point 
rather than going off topic. There is something at the lower level that says it's completely off topic. Um, so don't fall into that trap. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Well, I think we're pretty much done with part done two. Done for part two. Yeah, let's ask one part three question because we're almost... Hasn't time flown today? Oh my God. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> All right, we have time for maybe one question. <laughs> Fantastic. Let's go. Okay, okay so uh, you're going to love this one. Can getting lost have any positive outcomes? Yes, because if I were to say that if somebody got lost and had to use their initiative to find their way home or find a solution to something, that for me is a positive thing. And it could also lead to a very interesting story that you told you, that you could tell your family when you actually find a solution. So. I mean, it's not a direct positive, but I think there are some positive features. It's like using initiative and, and a, a, a good funny story in the future. Oh, excellent answer. And I got quite a few vocabulary options out of it. Yep. So you said initiative. Yep. Uh, and initiative. Oops. What's initiative? Uh, well, it's when you come up with an idea and you go and try something. Try something or maybe find a solution. Um, we often use initiative. So it's a tricky one. So um, please use your initiative mm, yeah. when doing something. Um, I don't think there's a verb that, no, you wouldn't. It's not a verb that we would say just to have initiative or to use initiative. Yeah, well, initiate doesn't really uh, mean the same. No, it's that, that means to start, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, so find a solution was also one of the items that you yeah. used. And that was a really great one. Lead to a story. Lead to a story. Yeah, a funny story. Have you got any, have you got any funny stories about you getting lost? Oh, me getting lost. Uh, well, I did get lost once and it was a very foggy day. And I just got off the bus and I started walking in the direction that I thought I knew it was leading to my home. And then there, there it was. I found myself in a completely foreign, unknown place. I had no idea where it was. And it was too foggy to see anything. Oh and I gosh. felt, I felt panic. Completely you know? disoriented. Yeah, and at that moment, I can tell you, I didn't see any positive outcome to getting lost. <laughs> but now you have a funny story and a good story to tell all of these people that are watching. So there is the exactly. this debate. Um, <laughs> Simone, we've got one minute left. So I want to wrap this up and say a huge thank you for coming along today. The students will be indebted to your um, input and it really helps me coming on classes like this because I'm sick of listening to my own voice. So it's fantastic to have somebody there else that can that can share their experiences. You have said that you may be willing to come back again. Is that right? Well, you know what, Chris? When you asked me, Simone, can you come on the show and uh, can we do an episode together? Uh, and I said, I would love to, and I meant it. So I would love to oh. come again. And I would love to be a part of what you do because I think it's it's wonderful because you are giving so much of your time for free to help people pass IELTS the first time and you are giving good, genuine advice that actionable, simple and makes the whole IELTS journey so clear and so easy to follow that it, it just you are making the task of taking IELTS a lot a lot simpler for people than it would be otherwise without you. So I would love to be part of that. That's very kind. Thank you. And and for any students that's watching this both now and in the future, your homework is to head over to the IELTS Daily uh, IELTS blog, sign up for the there's free material on there, right? I'm going to come back. Yes. If I can definitely. come over to your, uh, let's see if I can bring the window up. If I come over to the IELTS blog website and. Right on the first page, there is um, sign up free. Um, what do they get if they sign up for free? Oh, they're signing up for daily tips. Uh, we mail them on my tips five days a week. 
we'll leave the weekends free so that uh, people can go out and enjoy and party and do whatever, but not IELTS. Amazing. But they, they get uh, actionable tips that can, that can uh, improve their IELTS preparation and we show them strategies how they can optimize their current performance in the test. There's lots of good stuff, so uh, I'm not going to reveal all of it. I'm not going to spoil the surprise, but you should definitely try it because it's free and it's helpful. You've got nothing to lose. If it's free, head over to the IELTS blog website. Um, heaps, check out the recent questions. Down, um, subscribe and get the um, daily, five days a week, free email that comes, that's invaluable. Um, again, Simone, it's now time to, to, to bid you farewell and hopefully we'll see you again. All the students, if you're watching, please give a big round of applause and a big show of gratitude and thanks to Simone for coming along today. It was amazing to have you and thank you for putting me on the spot with those difficult questions. Maps is actually a really hard question. Would you find it difficult? I would, especially with my lack of special awareness. <laughs> um, let me see who is contributing here. So um, Sinduja says, nice meeting you, Simone. Um, Lorenzo says, love the class. Thank you, Simone. Uh, Sinduja, I love you, Simone. And you've got lots, lots of great new followers. So um, they can also come over to the IELTS blog YouTube channel, which I noticed you've got some free, some of the practice speaking tests with a, an examiner yeah. and a student, right? Oh yes, yeah. We've got the uh, practice test demonstrations, and we've also got some really nice videos with vocabulary for part two, which people find challenging. So do check them out. I highly recommend those. Okay, wonderful. Um, Simone, take care. I'm going to head over to the um, main. Thank you very much, Chris, and thank you everyone for your kind comments. Thank you so much. Wonderful, wonderful. And um, if you enjoyed today's class, which was a really, really useful class, I hope you've got a new wealth of vocabulary and um, I wish you a very nice week. Come back every Wednesday. We've got a free class every Wednesday and who knows, we may see Simone again sometime in the future. For now, make sure you head over to the IELTS Daily website if you haven't already done. Download the IELTS Daily app. You can get speaking and writing feedback. It is so important if you're planning to take the test and um, you need a high score. You need somebody to tell you where you're going wrong. Um, keep working hard, keep studying, um, you can do it, we can, we can get you there. So for now, take care, bye, bye bye.